Welcome to your ultimate guide to the Warhammer 40k Crusade system, an awesome way to play your games in 9th edition that the rulebook does a pretty piss poor job of explaining. The Crusade system in Warhammer 40,000 is a narrative rule set that brings a unique story-driven journey to your 40k tabletop gameplay. This system is built around a roster of units that gain experience, level up their combat prowess, sustain injuries, and above all else forge a backstory of victories and defeats based on your games of 40k. The most unique factor about the Crusade system is that this isn't a binding narrative campaign. It's more of a progression model that applies to your individual army. This means that your force can still progress their journey no matter who you play against. Your opponent doesn't even have to be using a Crusade force of their own. The system has balancing mechanics to account for various narrative bonuses and injury debuffs and is rich with unique war gear, battle traits and its own suite of missions, which in my opinion make Crusade one of the best ways to play 40k in 9th edition. So let's dive in. The first thing to do is to assemble your Crusade Force, or your Order of Battle. This isn't an army list, but a pool of units that you can draw from to create lists each time you play a game. Every unit in the pool must share a faction keyword, and the power rating of all the models in this pool cannot exceed 50, which is known as the Force's Supply Limit. You may add or remove units at any time, but once a unit is removed, all of their experience is lost. Once the models in a unit and their equipment have been assigned to this pool, that loadout cannot be changed along with any keywords that are chosen by the controlling player. Every unit in that pool must then have its own Crusade card. This card tracks the journey of that specific unit, including any experience it gains or injuries it sustains, all defining information about the unit, models, war gear, abilities, and how many enemy units it destroys through the course of battle. When assembling your Crusade Force, no model may gain immediate access to a Relic or Warlord trait, although these can be unlocked with Requisition. More on that later on. The only exception to this is named characters, who automatically have a Warlord trait even if they are not your Warlord. This represents the power a famed individual can have to sway the outcome of a story or legend. These models are only considered to be your Warlord for the purpose of resolving their trait, and they do not preclude another model in your order of battle from accessing that specific Warlord trait. With your Crusade Force mustered, it's time to start rolling some dice. First up, you'll need to decide what size game you're playing and build a battle-forged force from your Order of War. This follows the normal rules for detachments and mustering an army found in the core rules, with the exception that your Warlord is automatically the character in your army with the highest leadership value. Next, determine your army's crusade points. This metric is a measure of how battle-hardened your forces are from their narrative experience and accounts for any bonuses your units have received as indicated on their crusade card. If this is your force's first battle, this value will usually be zero. Any difference in crusade points between the two armies rewards half that difference in bonus command points to the inferior force. So now you're ready to play. Using one of the Crusade missions, follow all of the normal rules for setting up and resolving the game, with a few exceptions. Instead of picking secondary objectives, Crusade forces select between 1 and 4 agendas depending on the size of the game. These agendas are secondary goals for the units in your army to work towards that don't contribute to overall victory, but will generate additional experience to help them level up in the post-game reconciliation. Any objective markers used for a mission are placed after the battlefield has been created, allowing objectives to be placed within terrain features as long as the marker can lie flat on the surface. This creates much more interesting, albeit less balanced, objective conflicts than the open ground of competitive 40k. Often, these missions will prescribe the deployment zone of the attacker and the defender to better suit the narrative of the mission. Any time a unit destroys an enemy unit, note that down on that unit's crusade card. Players may score up to 90 victory points from their primary objectives, as agendas do not have any bearing on victory points, only unit experience. Once the game has been played, the victor may claim any bonuses outlined in the mission, and then it's on to our Crusade Reconciliation. This phase is the real core of the Crusade mechanics, and allows us to track the progress of our warriors and journey of our Crusade. For any unit that was destroyed during a battle, take an out of action test by rolling a d6. On the roll of a 1, the test has failed, and the controlling player must choose one of the following options for that unit. Devastating Blow Your unit loses d6 experience to a minimum of 0 and cannot gain any experience from agendas achieved, battle experience, or from being marked for greatness. More on that in just a sec. 
Battle Scar. Your unit gains one Battle Scar, which is determined by rolling on an injury table that corresponds to your unit's type, character, vehicle, monster, or other. These injuries range in severity from movement restrictions to permanent reduction in profile characteristics such as wounds and attacks, and even the loss of aura abilities. For each Battle Scar a unit sustains, subtract one from its Crusade points. Regardless of whether the test is passed or failed, the unit remains on your order of battle with all models intact and are ready for your next conflict. It is assumed that they are merely incapacitated, have been repaired, or suitable replacements were found. After resolving injuries, it's time to calculate the experience gained by your forces. Every unit with a crusade card that took part in the battle gains experience points as follows. Each unit gains one experience point for participating in the battle, Select one unit to be marked for greatness. This unit gains an additional three experience points. Every unit gains one experience for every third unit they have destroyed in battle. This is tracked by the running total on that unit's crusade card, so anytime you hit a multiple of three, that's one more experience point. Any unit that has met the criteria of an agenda gains the experience as described by those agendas. But what do these experience points actually mean? This is where the fun begins. Once a unit has accrued enough XP, it will ascend in rank. All units begin as battle ready, but ascend through bloodied, battle hardened, heroic, and legendary. When they gain a new rank, they gain a battle honor to reflect how their experience translates on the battlefield. These honors are broken down into four categories. Battle traits are skills or upgrades that represent years of experience honing this unit's prowess in battle. A player selecting a battle trait must either roll a d6 on the table corresponding to that unit's type, or simply choose which trait best fits your narrative from the appropriate table. Traits range from profile characteristic increases such as wounds and attacks, improved saving throws against certain weapons, morale and leadership bonuses, and movement increases. A unit can have multiple traits, but never the same one twice. Weapon enhancements are boosts to a range or melee weapons such as increased strength, better armor penetration, bonus mortal wounds, and increased damage. To determine your bonus, select a weapon of a single model in that unit and roll on the appropriate table in the manner according to your unit type. If your unit has a champion or leader, the weapon chosen must be for that model. Titanic units can only roll a d3 or may choose which option best suits their narrative, restricting their access to the first three outcomes. Characters, vehicles, or monsters that are not Titanic may roll a single d6 or choose as best suits their narrative. If the weapon you have selected is held by any other model, you may roll a d6 and a d3 or choose two different outcomes that best suit your narrative. Both of these results are applied to the same weapon. If a weapon chosen has multiple profiles, these bonuses apply to all firing modes, but if the weapon has both ranged and melee profiles, you may only use the melee weapon table, but apply your result to both profiles. Each weapon may only have this battle honor once, and relics and crusade relics may not be modified. Psychic fortitudes are bonuses only available to psychers that increase the amount of psychic powers they can manifest or attempt to deny each psychic phase or increase their total known powers by one. A unit can have more than one psychic fortitude, but each one only once. The final battle honors are called Crusade Relics. These are famed pieces of war gear that range from ancient armor and powerful weapons to iconic talismans, granting the unit a significant in-game bonus. Each time a unit gains a battle honor, increase their crusade points by 1 if the unit has a power level of 10 or less, or by 2 if the unit has a power level of 11 or greater. This is noted down on that unit's crusade card. Finally, named characters, swarms, drones, and units with the fortification battlefield roll never gain experience. The final phase of your Crusade post-game routine is to update the battle tallies of all of your Crusade units and your order of battle. The battle tallies list the amount of games your overall force and your individual units have fought in, as well as indicating how many times a particular unit has survived and how many enemies that unit has destroyed and in which manner. The final element of the Crusade system is Requisition. Requisition is a resource that represents your Crusade Force's ability to summon additional strategic resources and deploy them to the conflict. You start your Crusade with 5 Requisition points and gain an additional point at the end of every game you play, but can never have more than 5 in your Requisition pool. Requisition can be spent in the following ways, all of which cost a single RP. Increase your supply limit by 5 power. This allows you to increase the maximum pool of models that your army list can draw from and essentially facilitates the growth of your list into higher point games. 
Increase the number of models you have in a unit up to the maximum of its data sheet, remembering that any unit on your order of battle is fixed and cannot be altered except through this requisition. Modify the war gear of a unit as long as the changes won't affect that unit's power level. Remove a battle scar from a unit, thus increasing its crusade points. Change the psychic powers known by a psyker on your order of battle. The specialist reinforcement requisition is rather unique. When adding a new unit and its crusade card to your order of battle, if that unit could be upgraded to a better profile through the use of a stratagem, even if that stratagem would normally require this unit to be in a specific detachment, you may purchase this requisition to permanently upgrade that unit. This will increase the unit's crusade score by one point for every command point that the stratagem cost, but cannot be used to upgrade units with warlord traits relics, or any stratagems that upgrade units to be part of a specialist detachment. The final two options are for purchasing Warlord Traits and Relics. Both are purchased when you add a Crusade card for a character unit to your order of battle, and they must be relics and traits that that character would normally have access to. This can even be done if this character is not your Warlord. This requisition will add one to your character's Crusade score, or add two if that unit is Titanic. No model may have more than one Warlord trait and one relic, and each relic and trait may only be included once in your entire order of battle, except for named characters. So there we have the fundamental rules for the Crusade system, hopefully laid out in a format that is much more intuitive and clear than the absolutely bizarre attempt within the main rulebook. Don't get me wrong, I think the rules themselves are really promising and I can't wait to put them through their paces right here on the channel, but the manner in which they are explained is a mess. Concepts are introduced in the wrong order, complex addendums are explored before core mechanics, not to mention a four-page army showcase smack bang in the middle of fundamentals, which makes flipping through for quick reference just that bit more arduous. So, the next time someone in the 40k department tries to write a progression overlay for their main system, I suggest they check in with the Middle Earth team a few cubicles down and ask for J. Claire, because let's face it, Crusade is basically battle companies on crack. So there we have 9th edition's attempt at a narrative overlay system for Warhammer 40k. I think it's I think it's pretty good, it, it, promising at the very least. Uh, there's some really cool stuff in there, I, I like the different mechanics. The whole system of, of like a battle roster that starts small and forces you to grow big, I think that's really interesting because it does just sort of have an inbuilt progression. Uh, and I, I love, you know, units getting injured and, and units getting, uh, getting buffed up. I would say though that it probably isn't that hardcore, you know, I come from background of playing uh, battle companies and, and necromunda uh, so that kind of those systems are a lot more insane with the bad things and good things that can happen whereas this is a lot more subtle you know units don't ever die they just get these battle scars uh, that which you know debuff them but they can't ever be completely removed from your roster uh, units also can't seem to get insanely powerful they can get access to some great relics and special rules but uh, I don't what we see in, in some of our other narrative systems for Middle Earth there is that you know characters will just get like 50 billion buffs and they turn into these monsters um, and I don't foresee that happening as much. So maybe that's an attempt at uh, the 40k designers really trying to keep it also balanced but narrative. Uh, whereas in some other systems, balance is less important because we just care about insane story. So uh, maybe that's a good thing. Um, I probably would have liked to see perhaps some harsher penalties for units getting regularly destroyed. But in saying that, this is wave one of Crusade content. This is the Crusade rules that have come in the core rulebook. Now I doubt these fundamentals will change. Well, Games Workshop has said that each time there's a new codex or a new supplement, whatever those forms are going to be taking, there are going to be new crusade rules specific to that faction. So I think they're going to be able to access maybe specific stratagems that are available to crusade only, or uh, crusade war gear and upgrades, maybe a, a different enhancement table or a different injury table, who knows? We, uh, we can do lots of speculation, but new crusade content will be dropping throughout 9th edition. The other thing to talk about is the format in which this was released. Uh, uh, in this main rules manual, apart from the fact that it was terribly written um, in terms of a layout and explanation, especially for new players, shocking. Um, but the uh, but it's 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 a compartment of the main rulebook at the moment. It's in here. It's a big chunk in a in an appendix. Will we ever see like a crusade book that comes out with the main rules, perhaps a revision on those rules, and then updates from all the different codexes and things that have come out, sort of down the track? So we may get changes and tweaks to this system as all of the new 
new books for different factions come out and, and level up the system and maybe make it a bit better. So um, yeah, I think it's really promising. Um, I'm definitely keen to start getting down and rolling some dice. What do you guys think about it? Do you like the fact that they've even tried to bring narrative back to 40k? That's the biggest takeaway for me. I don't care about points match games. I'm not interested in the tournament system. All I've ever done with my mates is play narrative campaigns. And we'd invent our own rules, we'd write our own stratagems, we modified like the fourth edition system was the first time we did it when they brought out Cities of Death. You know, so that's that's all I've ever done and it's all I've ever cared about is narrative and story in 40k. Uh, so I'm really happy that they've gone down this route and I'm really excited to explore the system. Definitely let me know if you guys think this is a promising direction uh, for ninth edition to go. Uh, I think it's cool, I hope you do as well. Because uh, boy oh boy are we gonna have some crusade content here on the channel. My goodness, the painting is about to begin as I finish this post roll, I'm putting paint down on my first unit in my Crusade Force. Gonna have some great tutorials coming out following that building journey, and of course some epic battle reports as we dive into some seriously epic narrative action. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Definitely let me know, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Like the video if you did enjoy it, and please subscribe if you're new around here. Uh, we're diving into 9th edition pretty hardcore, so there'll be a lot of cool stuff on the way. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.